Hello, welcome back to another episode of Talks in Class. I am Jenna, I'm so excited that you're here to join me today. Thank you so much for being here. I hope everyone's had a great week. We had uh, another week of rain here in Los Angeles. It's getting kind of crazy at this point, <laughs> honestly. I feel like everybody is just kind of looking around like, is this a, a joke? It's been going on for so long. But last weekend, at least on Saturday, it was beautiful, perfect weather. And I feel like, you know, that that first perfect spring day in New York or really anywhere that has winter, but I always think of that perfect spring day in New York where everybody just emerges from their cocoons, from their hibernation, and you can just feel the energy in the air where everyone's just happy and excited to be out, excited to be outside living life. That's how it felt. <laughs> it was just so exciting. So we went to a flea market, um, the Los Feliz Flea, which takes place in a high school parking lot. And the reason why my husband wanted to go there was not for the flea market at all. It was because the high school where it takes place is the high school that is used in the original Nightmare on Elm Street movie from the 80s. And he is a big fan of all of those movies, but especially the original, obviously. I wanted to go for the shopping, naturally, and he wanted to go so that he could see this school because that's, you know, his thing. But it was a really fun day. It was a great flea market. I actually did a little mini vlog on it, but it was a great market. I love, you know, vintage shopping and, and digging through things like that. But it was also just so nice to do an outside activity and just wander around. We did like three laps around the place because I just didn't want to go back inside. And then early in the week, the rain came back. And I feel like this past week, is when I finally snapped with the bad weather. And I'm someone who is impacted by the weather anyway, but I just feel like this intense feeling of cabin fever. And I don't know maybe if it's intensified here in California because there is the expectation that there's gonna be nice weather. So every day I wake up and I'm like, okay, we're gonna see the sun today. It's gonna be a nice day, I'm gonna go outside. No, pouring rain. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it, it needs to stop. I need to breathe some fresh air. I don't know how many of you out there are Vanderpump Rules watchers, but I am totally sucked in to the Bravo universe right now with this whole Scandal situation. I've been a, a Vanderpump fangirly since day one, 2013, when Sheena walked into the back of Sir in the middle of an episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and we were all like, what's going on? How did we get into this new show. But if you don't watch it, honestly, if you're a reality TV fan especially and you don't watch it, what are you doing? It is the best reality TV show I think I've ever seen. The first three seasons especially are truly top tier reality TV. It's just like so messy. It's so... It feels authentic and you know, it was 2013 so reality TV was still kind of real like we didn't have social media the way that we do now so you could watch drama unfold on tv and not have to also see their commentary coming in in real time which i think what that's what was so special about it then but the other thing that i really like about vanderpump specifically is that it reminds me of being in my 20s and they were so real in terms of being 20 somethings that were just trying to make it you know they were living in terrible apartments with roommates that they didn't like or, you know, having dramatic, messy relationships and working restaurant jobs and trying to figure out real life. So this week, as always, I'll start with my what good happened. And this is so funny, but I have been looking for a Motley Crue graphic tee for months, okay? I love graphic tees. They're very much a staple in my wardrobe. My husband, too, and I inherit a lot of his old ones when he shrinks them in the washer, doesn't want them anymore. I'll take them and then cut them up but I pair them with anything. They're just one of those things that I really love. But I really especially love thrifting them or finding just more unique ones instead of, you know, I love a good Target graphic tee, but the ones that you find out somewhere at a thrift store or something that has some handmade quality or whatever, they just have a little bit more interest. So I've been looking for a good Motley Crue one, and I don't know why it's just so hard to find a Motley Crue one, but I found one at the flea market this weekend. It's amazing. They had cut it off into a tank top, so it's sleeveless, but it's a Dr. Feelgood tour t-shirt with like the words on the back and the date. And from the tag inside the shirt, 
from what I can tell, I think it's a reproduction of that concert t-shirt that was made in 2005. So I like that. I really, I like that it's, you know, it's not technically vintage, but it's close. And I graduated in 2005, so it pains me to say that 2005 is close to being considered vintage, but it was an exciting find. I love st finding these things in the wild, as my husband says, rather than finding them on eBay or finding them in a way that kind of helps the the digging process. I like to just stumble upon it in the wild. And that's exactly how I found this one. I was just looking through some t-shirts at one of the vintage booths and it was there. And I was like, oh my God, I need it. So I bought it. <laughs> if you've been listening for the past couple of weeks, today's episode is a continuation of the past two weeks conversations, which were all about college life in the 2000s. So far, we've covered what it was like to be a freshman in college in 2005, and then living with friends and roommates in college apartments as a 21-year-old-ish in 2008. And this week is the icing on the 2000s college life cake. We are talking about spring break. Speaking of spring break, before we talk about spring break in the 2000s, let's talk about spring, not necessarily break, but spring now. Specifically spring clothes because I am so excited. I have been loading up my closet on Jenna Barclay Stylebox, which is my clothing rental service with all the spring styles I can find. Anything and everything is going in there. So I wanted to quickly share another tip for those of you who do use the rental service. I know that spring really starts the season of events, different occasions, different events that you're going to, everything from wedding showers to girls brunch days to family vacations. And if you maybe want to rent an outfit or two for a special occasion so that you don't have to buy an outfit that you maybe won't wear again. The Dart option is a great tool to use for this. Dart allows you to choose the exact two items that you'll receive in your next box. You know exactly what you're going to get and it ships the box right away. So you're going to get it sooner. I used this for the holidays and it was really great because we were moving and I didn't have a whole lot of access to my clothes because most of them were in storage. So I used Dart so I could pick specific items that I wanted to wear for Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, and Christmas Day. To use Dart, it's really easy. All you do is log into the website and then select return notify for any items that you do have at home. Once you do that, or if you don't have any items at home, the Dart option will automatically pop up for you when you go into your closet and it will show you all of the items that are currently available in the size that you need for Dart. And from there, all you have to do is select the ones that you want and confirm. If you haven't tried it yet and you would like to try Jenna Barclay's Style Box, you can try completely free for your first month, no code needed. All you have to do is head to jennabarclaystylebox.com and just click get started. Happy spring renting. Spring is such an exciting time. We have better weather. You can feel summer coming. Everybody is coming out of hibernation, kind of coming alive again. And if you are a college student, spring also means spring break, which is really the highlight of the semester. <laughs> Now, I can't speak on present day spring break experiences, but I just have a feeling that this is one of those things that's kind of timeless. I would be willing to bet that college kids are still piling into someone's car and driving to Panama City Beach to spend a week drinking and getting sunburn and sharing one small dingy hotel room with four other girls. But we're not here to talk about spring break now because I am 35 and spring break to me would mean a week off where I could sit in silence and read a book without ever having to look at my email and go to bed at 930 every night. And that would not make a very interesting podcast. We are here to talk about spring break in the 2000s, baby. When I was in college, there were a few really popular spring break destinations. First, there was Mexico. This was for either rich kids whose parents would pay for them to go to Cabo or kids who went on those all-inclusive spring break trips that in hindsight really feel like the start of a true crime story that would definitely become a Netflix series. Then there was Panama City Beach. PCB was for serious party spring breakers and also kids with a really big truck or a giant SUV because people usually drove there from my college. Mind you, this was like a 12 hour drive because we were in Texas and people were driving to Florida. But I guess piling six friends into your suburban and splitting gas amongst you was way cheaper than six flights. So it makes sense. We were in college after all. 
Plus, then you could also bring a big old cooler decorated in frat letters full of beer. We were all about making sound economic choices. You know what I mean? And then there was Corpus Christi. This was much easier. Still a long freaking drive because it's Texas, but not as far. Of my four college spring breaks, I went away for three of them. My freshman year, two of my friends and I actually came out to L.A., and spent a week with my friend's family who's out here. So it was tame, it was wholesome, it was cute. This was 2006, so obviously we drove down to Laguna Beach and I remember us running around <laughs> Laguna, scoping out spots from the show. I'm sure the locals could spot us from a mile away and thinking back, it's mildly horrifying and very cringe, but whatever, okay? We were having so much fun. We were legitimately so excited. My last year of college, I went to Vegas. <laughs> I remember getting to the airport in Vegas and as soon as I landed, there was this woman who was so wasted and she was trying to drink one of those individual bottles of wine, like barefoot wine while going through security. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't let her on the plane. I mean, if they did let her on the plane, I would be shocked by that. But I remember seeing that as soon as I got off the plane as I'm leaving the airport and I thought, oh my God, I am going to die. <laughs> like I am not gonna survive Vegas. But it really wasn't that crazy. We saw some shows and we drank by the pool. And I feel like because it's happening during the day and there's a DJ and drinks are like $20 and people are mostly acting somewhat civilized, it just seems more tame to drink by the pool than taking shots in the club at night. But I do remember being at this club this one night and it's so dry in Vegas, and obviously my body was not used to that dry air. So I got a nosebleed, which I never get nosebleed. So I ran to the bathroom, and I remember when I came out of the stall, I ran to the bathroom, I went in the stall to grab like tissue for my nose, and when I came out of the stall, the bathroom attendant was side-eyeing me so hard. She was definitely judging. She thought there was a little something going on in that stall, and not just, I'm not used to the desert air. But the spring break to end them all, and actually looking back, I am surprised I ever thought about going on another spring break after this one was 2007 in Mexico. Three of my friends and I went on an all-inclusive spring break trip for an entire week, a full week in Mexico. It was one of those student city trips. And if you guys don't know student city, they were or I assume that they no longer exist. I have no idea, but they were a company that offered these trips for spring break and things like that they were designed for college kids and when i say designed for college kids i don't mean designed for college kids from an adult's perspective of what a college kid wants i mean very much designed for college kids the way that a college kid would design it for themselves and if that sounds terrifying to you it should because that is exactly what it was it was a 24 7 party for a full week and i don't say 24 seven to exaggerate. I literally mean you could drink all day on all night if you wanted to. They took us on buses from the airport to the hotels where we were staying. And on the way to the hotel, the bus stopped at a store so that we could all buy beer to start drinking on the bus straight off the plane to drinking. So the way that it worked was that if you were part of this group, you would get a wristband and that gave you access to all the student city stuff. There were parties on the beach with beer pong and flip cup tournaments and stuff during the day. There were parties every single night at a different venue or a different club. A lot of them were themed. I remember there was a foam party that was really disgusting and my friends and I would not go in the foam. Thank God. And sometimes there were after parties for these parties so that you could really continue partying all night if you wanted to. And these wristbands would get you into all of the parties, obviously. And I'm pretty sure they got you free drinks at most, if not all of these places. And meals were included as well. If I remember correctly, you would get a set number of vouchers that were good at certain restaurants where you could eat. So all of these kids that were on this group spring break trip were all going to these same restaurants every single night to eat with our little vouchers before we went out to the club. It was like a very twisted summer camp situation for very drunk college kids in Mexico for a week. So to 19 year old me in 2007, this was a dream come true. I thought, that this was the greatest thing I could ever think up. 
I have a lot of foggy memories of this trip, both because it was in 2007 and that's a long time ago, but also because we drank every single day for seven days straight. But fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I have a lot of photographic evidence of this spring break trip. It's funny because all the pictures that I have now are hard copy photos, like actual printed out photos. They're not digital. So I'm not sure if they were on Facebook at some point in an album or if 2007 Me actually had the sense not to publish them on the internet. But I doubt that. I don't think I would have been that smart. I probably just took that album down at some point and don't remember it. But I do think that the photos are from disposable cameras and not digital because my digital cameras at the time all put like a little date stamp in the corner of the photos and these pictures don't have that. And it would make sense actually that I would have brought disposable cameras on this trip because I was notorious for losing my digital cameras in college. I think I actually went through two my freshman year alone. <laughs> I don't know what lie I told my dad about what happened to my first one because there's no way he would have bought me another one if I told him that I just lost it or broke it or whatever happened to it. I'm sure I had a story, um, but I went through multiple digital cameras in college. And considering we were going to Mexico to party our faces off for a week, it was probably a safe bet to assume that I would have broken another one had I brought it with me. Regardless of what kind of camera captured these precious moments, 2007 Jenna blessed present day Jenna with many photos. There aren't too many photos from the parties themselves. We still kind of lived in the moment in 2007. We hadn't yet developed this need to document every single thing yet. I feel like that happened with iPhones. And thank God for that, honestly, because I wouldn't want to know what the pictures would have looked like had I been taking them throughout the nights. But what there are a lot of photos of are our outfits. <laughs> And we must have been very proud of them because we would do, you know, multiple poses before we went out every single night to show off our looks. Okay, you guys, it was 2007. And if you don't remember, 2007 was arguably one of the worst times in fashion when it came to kind of low end, mainstream, cheap clothing for young people. I wore a lot of clothes from Wet Seal a lot of plastic accessories in 2007. I also shopped at Hollister and American Eagle a lot naturally, but this was the era of like the awkward length tunic tank top that kind of looked like a dress worn over pants, but it wasn't long enough to actually be a dress. You had to wear it over pants, which by the way, the pants were boot cut jeans. Mine were usually big star brand from the Buckle or Express. And these bootcut jeans were rolled into a giant slouchy kind of cuff at our ankles. The cuff was our gateway between bootcut jeans and skinny jeans. And the end result silhouette looks a lot like the jeans that I like to wear now. It's just a straight leg hitting right at the ankles. But for those of us who weren't early adopters of the skinny jean that didn't jump right onto that, 2006 and 2007-ish had us cuffing our boots boot cut jeans up like we were go about to go wade in a creek. Okay, it was a large cuff. 2007 was also the era of peep toe sling back platform pumps, especially that very specific black fake leather or patent pump with the sling back and the stacked kind of low platform with the stiletto heel and the, the peep toe. Also, the cork wedge, which I loved. And I also did tend to prefer that in a peep toe variety as well. A lot of peep toes. This was also prime time for the huge, giant, round, oversized bug eye sunglasses, which I also loved. I personally was obsessed with the kind of boho leaning Mick Bling aesthetic that was happening at the time, like Nicole Richie, Mary Kate and Ashley, Rachel Zoe. But since I was a 19 year old, College student, my personal style was something of a mix between the cast of Laguna Beach and Mary Kate and Ashley if they were middle class kids in suburbia. I wore a lot of stacked wood bangles and long chain necklaces and flowy white baby doll tops, a lot of beaded things, a lot of lace or eyelet, just that whole kind of vibe, but the mall store version of it, the cheap 
young version of it. And I had the Midwestern teenager version of Nicole Richie's iconic long bob, which I am still obsessed with to this day. Not my version, her version. <laughs> Actually, one of the funniest things about the pictures that I have from this trip is that shortly before the trip, I tried to cut my own bangs. I had the Nicole Richie long bob, but I wanted to really nail the full look with those really cool swoopy side bangs that she had. So I cut them myself. And obviously I messed them up so, so, so bad. They're so short and they look so awkward. So every single picture, I have these stupid little bangs like pushed to one side of my forehead. So anyway, my three friends and I fly to Mexico and we find ourselves on a bus full of a bunch of other rowdy college students drinking beer before we've even reached the hotel where we're gonna sleep for the next seven days. And I remember being on that bus and just having this feeling like, we were on MTV or something. Like we were about to embark on something truly amazing. Like this was going to be our life's greatest adventure. This was, it was thrilling to us. And from that first beer on the bus ride <laughs> on the way to the hotel, I mean, we really didn't stop until we finally all hit a wall on the final day and just could not go on and decided to sit in the room <laughs> and eat dominoes. Our bodies were probably literally shutting down. Isn't it actually insane? that this type of behavior is just generally kind of socially accepted when you're in college. It's very weird to me. Like, do you ever really think about college the way that it is in the United States? Our parents ship us off at 18 years old to live in a weird place full of other teenagers with no supervision except for what, the RA who is also just a slightly older version of us and then we spend four years in this place where we spend half our times trying to cram anatomy and trigonometry into our brains and wrap our heads around philosophy while wearing $48 sweatpants that say pink across the butt and then we spend the other half of our time just partying our faces off like not having a casual cocktail but straight up blacking out on Everclear or Four loco. Perhaps we should re-examine this whole concept. And the majority of people go into pretty much lifelong debt for this experience. I just, I don't know. Anyway, okay, spring break 2007. During the days, we would go to the pool or the beach or whatever and have a nice frozen margarita. Then we would nap and then it was time to prepare for the night. So first we would get ready, obviously. And it's funny because I can tell from the photos how the trip progressed because I went from having my hair straightened and having 2007's version of a nice outfit of going out top with jeans and heels on in the early part of the trip to the later part of the trip. I have my hair scrunched like ramen with my bangs pinned back. They're still wet in like a really sad poof. And I'm just wearing like a denim mini skirt and flip flops. I just, I ran out of energy over the course of the trip. Once we were ready and we had completed our little photo shoot in our crappy hotel room, <laughs> we would go to dinner. I remember one night we went to a restaurant where we ordered a, a pitcher of rum and Coke. So they brought us one of those plastic soda pitchers, you know, that you get at a kid's birthday party at a roller skating rink or Chuck E. Cheese, full of so much rum and like just enough Coke to make it brown and a handful of these giant straws. So we didn't pour it into glasses. We just all stuck a straw into the pitcher and chugged. After dinner, we'd hit the club. They would shuttle us back and forth to these various venues where the parties were each night in golf carts. So we'd be like drunk off our rum and Cokes from dinner plus our day drinking in these golf carts with someone driving us. And they always had music blaring and we're like screaming going down the street. Like where were, what was happening? And honestly, we were probably drinking on these golf carts. I don't even remember, but each night the party was at a different venue and it was a lot of the time a different theme. I remember one was on a boat and I think the boat took us out to some island where there was a giant beach party. And it just kind of like dumped us there to party on this beach somewhere, not close to where we were <laughs> staying. Saying this out loud, I realized this 1000% sounds like the start of a horror movie. A bunch of drunk college kids getting on a boat on water <laughs> that ships them out to some island and provides them with enough tequila to tranquilize a horse. 
But we were just like, yeah, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. The people who worked for the company were running around on the boat with super soakers full of tequila and they would just come up to you and spray tequila in your face in your face. I wish I was joking. This is crazy for me to think about now. But again, we were 19 or 20 years old or whatever. So we were thinking this is the best night of our lives. One night we even went to the after party, which happened after the, the nightly big party at whatever club or bar the party was at. And I remember at this after party, there were swinging saloon doors, you know, the ones that you see in like Western movies. And they were leading into, I don't know, either the bathroom or maybe just another part of the bar. But my friend was walking through those doors with two drinks, one in each hand. And she was walking behind somebody. It might have been me. I don't even remember. But she had the two drinks in her hand and whoever walked before her walked through the doors and let them go and they swung back and they knocked the beers <laughs> out of her hand and it went all over her. I'm sure I have a picture somewhere, but she really had beer like in her hair. It was all over her <laughs> face. It was actually really funny. So as you can imagine, after a few days of day drinking in the sun all day long and partying all night, we started dropping like flies. By the last day, we were barely hanging on. I don't even know how we made it to the airport and managed to get home. Can you imagine having to go through airport security with a seven day hangover and probably some sunburn? And spring break, like actual spring break of school is only a week long. And this trip was a week long, which meant that when we got home, we had to just jump right back into real life, right back into, well, college real life. We had to jump right back into everything. There was no time to recover. There was no vacation from the vacation to recover from this marathon of partying that we did for a week in Mexico. But I guess that's the beauty of youth that we didn't appreciate at the time, right? Is we just didn't need recovery time. We had these magical powers that allowed us to just go without rest for extended periods of time. It is amazing to me. And honestly, so rude because now I need a week to recover from one night out. So to conclude this episode, I'm going to share with you my list of the top five most important things to do to prepare for your spring break trip in 2007. Number five, load up a solid vacay playlist on your iPod. Make sure that you rename all of the songs that you illegally downloaded in your iTunes first so that you can easily find them. And then make sure to include a lot of Fergie on your playlist because nothing hypes you up to take some overly sweet mixed shot that some frat boy sent over quite like Fergalicious. Number four, stock up on Aussie scrunch spray for scrunching your hair when you have been drinking for four days straight and you barely have the will to live. Hawaiian Tropic tanning oil with SPF four because you need to get a tan and then dream matte mousse to cover up the sunburn. Number three, get some fresh highlights. The chunkier, the better. And make sure it's a very bright, unnatural shade of platinum blonde. And bonus, if you make the entire underside of your hair dark brown. Number two, get a fresh set of acrylic French tip nails, extra square. Maybe even get a French pedicure with a little flower painted on your big toe because it's vacation. And number one, very important, hit the tanning salon and request a level three bed for the maximum time. You are going to need a good base tan for your vacation because you are going to get drunk on the beach and forget to apply your sunscreen. Don't forget the Playboy Bunny or the heart-shaped sticker on your hip so everybody can see how pale you used to be. And with that, this concludes my trilogy of college life in the 2000s episodes. I really hope you enjoyed this journey that we've gone on together. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend who might also enjoy it. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And I will be back next week. Bye. Bye.